ever have trouble picking that dream car in just one color? You won't have that problem with the Mustang that just rolled into Niagara Falls at the Hot Wheels Color Shifters road trip. Not only is it an incredibly cool Mustang with uh, Hot Wheels branding on it and flames and all kinds of cool stuff, but it actually changes color. It's a one of a kind color changing Mustang, so it changes from blue to white uh, based on different temperatures. So if you spray it down with warm water, it changes from blue to white, and spray it with uh, cold water, and it changes from white to blue. How does the color shift work? It's called thermochromatic paint, and I'm not exactly sure how it works. Um, I know that it's temperature based. I suspect it's something to do with the molecules expanding and contracting based on the temperature, but uh, not 100% sure. They gave me the car and just said, don't scratch it. How much does it cost to paint this car? I, you know what? People ask me that all the time, and I don't even know the answer. I know that it's costly, and it's hard to find the paint. Uh, as far as I know, you can only have it imported from Japan right now. Uh, it's hard to find. It's also very hard to find somebody who can actually paint the car and mix the, the paint appropriately. So yeah, they're still perfecting the technology, but uh, as you can see, it's, it's pretty awesome. The color shifter wasn't the only set of Hot Wheels in Niagara Falls today, as the Sheridan played host to the first Canadian die-cast car convention. What's the experience as a designer coming to the conventions? Actually, that, that's, that's been one of the coolest things ever. The first time I ever went to one, I, I was, uh, was kind of blown away because for me it was rewarding enough doing these cars then all of a sudden you've got all these collectors and people that appreciate and they know what you've done and you know you just wow this is you know it's just another form of you know, appreciation and, and, and it's it's huge so it's the, con the conventions are have been pretty amazing for me and it's been more than just collectors it's actually I've made a lot of friends what's it like watching children play with the cars that you have helped design yeah, that's the best part, seeing the kids rip into these things, you know, because so many of the collectors, you know, I'm not opening this, this is a so-and-so, so-and-so, you know, and then you see some of these kids ripping into the, uh, the more expensive ones, and, you know, they're like, yeah, that's, that's what they are intended for, is to be played with, but you know, not knocking the collector, you know, I was a collector, actually, before I, I, uh, I understand how that works, too, but it's the kids, you know, that's, that's the best part, it's just, that's where it all starts, right? So, how did you get into the uh, business of designing Hot Wheels? Well, I was a designer in Detroit designing Fords at the time and uh, snowed on me a few too many times. So I went to California looking for a job and somebody told me about a job at Mattel designing little cars. And I said, sure, I can do that for a couple of years, something to do until I get a real job. And I've been there ever since. It's been a great job. How have you enjoyed the Hot Wheels designing job? Oh, fantastic. I get to draw cars all day long, just like when I was a kid. Uh, and the best part, of course, is seeing the final product in a kid's hands, playing with it. And the collector convention that's here, I mean, this stuff is unbelievable. Every room's filled with Hot Wheel cars, and guys are buying the car they're looking for, so it's been a great time. Can you share the price tag of your die-cast collection? Half a million, maybe a million dollars. You know, um, I do have pretty much the largest collection in the world. Uh, well, Guinness says I have the largest collection in the world. My mainstay is toy sets and, and uh, play sets and track sets and things like that. Uh, I have a museum uh, in Utica, New York at the Children's Museum on the fourth floor. I have um, seven 12-foot rooms. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. A lot of people from all over the world come and see that. There are a few cars that I'm, I'm still lacking. I'm, I'm a collector number guy. Um, there are four cars that I'm still missing. They're all high dollar cars. So probably uh, ten or fifteen thousand dollars would would pick up those four numbers for me. But I did actually pick up uh, one number that I needed today. So that was that was really exciting for me. One of the other things that, that, that really ended up being really cool is um, Mattel did my old race car as a Hot Wheel. So being a collector and uh, having having my real car and my name on a Hot Wheel package that you could see in the store is uh, that's really, really cool. Now, the road trip has been all over Canada. Why did you choose to end at Niagara Falls at this convention? Uh, we figured it was a good spot uh, to end off the tour. Of having the, the Hot Wheels designers here, Larry and, uh, and Wayne being here, we thought it would be a good uh, cap to the tour. And lots of really enthusiastic uh, Hot Wheels fans here and collectors. So what better way to end uh, summer than uh, have it here? And we just thought it would be an awesome uh, way to end it off and uh, show the fans the, uh, the car in all of its glory. This is the color shifter's last stop before it parks in the Hot Wheels garage. In Niagara Falls, I'm Mike Morgan, reporting for The Source.